It's been 15 years since the first Comdex came to Las Vegas back in 1978. In fact, it's been so long since that original Comdex, it's hard to find anybody who knows what the letters Comdex stand for. It used to be the Computer Dealers Exposition. But nowadays, Comdex is no longer really an acronym. It is simply a word for the world's largest computer show. Today, we'll take you to Comdex Fall 93 to show you the latest and newest hardware and software on the special edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is brought to you in part by Intel, microprocessor technology for the software of today and tomorrow. Intel, the computer inside. Additional funding is provided by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, personal computer division. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles at Comdex. I'm Stuart Chaffe here on the convention floor with Tim Baharin, president of Creative Strategies. Tim, Comdex gets bigger and bigger every year. It's hard to imagine, but it's true. You've been running around. What are the big stories, the main themes of this year's Comdex? Well, the biggest theme is multimedia. Everywhere you go, you're going to see computers that are integrating video, audio, sound, voice recognition, really transforming the computer more into an information tool that can communicate as well, much easier to use. The second thing we're seeing is portability. Lighter, lighter PCs, lighter portables, lighter notebooks, better screen, better color, uh, better power. So you're seeing a lot of portability on this floor, as well as wireless technology. Just about everywhere you go, you find examples of how wireless technology can connect you to the office. And the last thing that is a really big issue is that Motorola is here in force with IBM and Apple pushing the power PC chip and going head-to-head -head with Intel for the first time and really challenging them on the desktop front with their PowerPC versus the Pentium. So you'll see many PCs that have both the Pentium chip and the PowerPC, so we're going to see them together. It's a real interesting show. Okay, today we'll take you to Comdex. Imagine no tired feet, no overpriced food, no obnoxious salesmen, just the best of Comdex Fall 93. On the software side, the major vendors were showing off their new software suites, bundled packages of the basic business applications, all interconnected and linked, but not quite fully integrated. Microsoft was demoing the latest version of Microsoft Office, featuring Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, and Mail. All five applications are tied together through an office manager. And using the latest object linking and embedding technology, Olay 2.0, you can link any part of a document in one application to a related document in another application. Office also comes with a new feature called IntelliSense that automates common functions. Well, some of the features, for example, in Word, you have autocorrect that automatically corrects your typing mistakes, your common typographical errors as you're, in, as you're typing your, um, your input. There's also auto format that automatically formats your entire document. You can delegate these tasks to the computer instead of having to spend your time formatting a document. Word Perfect was also pushing its business suite called Word Perfect Office. This bundle includes several communications applications, such as email, calendar and scheduling, and task management. The whole package integrates with WordPerfect, so you can move documents directly from inside your word processor. The email function in WordPerfect Office includes office rules, which allow you to automate certain functions, such as forwarding mail to an associate when you're out of town. It also features an intelligent outbox, which gives you the status of outgoing messages. WordPerfect Office is designed especially for a network environment. We're able from one centralized point to add, delete, move, uh, modify users on any one of the post offices in any of the domains in, in the entire administration uh, that is defined for the network. So we're able, with very simple control, to automatically keep things in one uh, administrator's position. So he doesn't have to go out and travel, use a lot of floppies, or have to uh, FedEx stuff out. And so then he's able to do things automatically right over the network that's already defined. Lotus was showing off its new office bundle called Smart Suite. It includes 123, the Approach database, Freelance Graphics, AmiPro, and Lotus Organizer. Like the Microsoft package, Smart Suite comes with an application manager that uses DDE and Olay technology to give you live links among the various applications. 
While some vendors were bundling their products into groups of applications, others were offering individual applications designed for groups of workers. Twincom was showing off Seafoam, an add-on that lets you turn your PC into a video conferencing system. This is real-time, full-motion video at 30 frames per second. And according to Twincom, their system is better than AT&T's. AT&T has one of these little phones that came out last Christmas. The screen was this big. It used regular phone lines. And Bob Kavanagh walked up to the stage like that, laughing at his own product. It's not a product that that will be usable in the business world. We have to come close to TV quality. We've spent so many hours watching TV. Anything less, we're just going to say, that's a lousy picture. I don't want to use it. A company called Team Incorporated was also showing off a video conferencing system that lets you move video and data at the same time and gives you the ability to remotely switch cameras. Multitech showed off its computer conferencing system that lets two users at different locations speak to each other through a modem connection while working on and looking at the same computer document. Definitely, we should target the product for Germany. How does that sound? Smart Technologies demonstrated its Smart 2000 whiteboard. This is a conventional whiteboard that automatically stores everything you write on the board into a bitmap file so that the same information could be shared with associates either as a Windows application file or in real time over a local area network. The other big software story of Convex was the growth of the CD-ROM as an application's medium. New CD-ROM titles were everywhere, from serious business apps to X-rated adult adventures. Enjoy your trip through the dream machine. Most of the new CD titles were taking advantage of the CD's ability to store large sound and video files. This is Video Linguist from Cubic Media. It's a language training program that lets you slow down the native speaker if you need to hear a phrase more clearly. Du matin au soir, notre pilote homme nomme une audience étrange. It also lets you record your own voice and compare it to your teacher. Bouillant la chaleur du soleil, la tour va osciller toute la journée. Bouillant la chaleur du soleil, la tour va osciller toute la journée. WordPerfect launched a new edutainment software label called Main Street. This is one of its first CD-ROM products called Tune 1000. It's an interactive cartoon called Wallaby Jack that lets you affect the outcome of the story. Wallaby Jack! And there was software for the new 3DO platform. Software Toolworks was showing several titles that take advantage of the 3DO graphics engine, which can improve game animation by a factor of 50. Multimedia was everywhere at this Comdex. The full multimedia story is next. Multimedia has been a buzzword at Comdex for years. But at this Comdex, Fall 93, multimedia has finally become a business. How can you tell? All the Hollywood types are here in force trying to figure out how to get their products on the computer platform. I had lunch with Quincy Jones and Shelley Duvall and some of the folks in the Hollywood crowd who were here basically to try to find out what the folks in the quote-unquote digital world are doing and then more importantly how we can help them translate their creative talent and bring that over to a much more viable platform for them to participate in. For Hollywood to move on to the computer platform, PCs and Macs will have to figure out how to get better full motion video into a computer. And that was certainly the main theme at the multimedia portion of Comdex. Up until now, most videos had to be seen in small windows. Blow it up to full screen, and it looks pretty awful. But now, Waytech has come up with its Video Power coprocessor board that lets you see clean, full screen video. For anybody to really want to watch video for Windows, they want to really see it on full screen. But with most of the applications, the, when the picture is blown up, it becomes very blocky and unrealistic. Looks like almost like a video game. Uh, what Video Power does is provide the opportunity to blow the picture up to full size, full screen, and run at 30 frames a second and provide TV quality that's really watchable on the full screen. With the Mega Motion video card from ASL, you can watch up to four full motion videos at the same time, all going at 30 frames per second. The Mega Motion card uses JPEG technology. MediaVision says it has the fastest graphics accelerator card, offering 24 bit. True color at up to 1024 by 768 resolution. This is a demonstration program from MediaVision called Critical Path. It 
between animation, a game, and full motion video, all on one CD-ROM. MediaVision also showed off a new form factor for multimedia upgrade kits. This is the Memphis box, featuring the CD-ROM drive, digital sound card, and speakers in one neat little box that fits under your computer monitor. ATI showed off their video board called the Video Wonder. It speeds things up by doing video capture and compression in a single step. That keeps all the video overhead off of your system bus. On a budget, Sigma Designs has this MPEG video compression card called Real Magic that will give you full screen, full motion video for under $500. Stuck with an old 286 or 386 PC, Codling International of Taiwan has a set of two boards that uses their Commotion Video Compression chipset, so you can even do full motion video using a slower CPU. The secret is a new video compression algorithm called FST, or Foursquare Transform. If you want to play with video and create special digital effects, you might be interested in the Video Blaster from Creative Technologies. It offers pixel interpolation, chroma key, and other video effects for under $500. If you just want to watch TV on your computer screen, the price has come down. This is the PC TV board from LifeView, under $200, including the rabbit ears. But the ultimate TV PC wasn't a PC at all. It was the new Macintosh TV from Apple. It's a Macintosh LC520, a Sony Trinitron TV, and a CD-ROM player all-in-one. You can easily hook up a VCR or a printer, and it does come with a remote control. Finally, IBM was showing off HD TV quality video on a computer screen using their new digital analog converter or DAC technology. One model features 65,000 colors and a resolution of 1600 by 1280. The other model can display 16 million colors with a resolution of 1280 by 1024. Coming up next, the newest in portable computers and wireless communication. When you were a kid riding your bike, the brag would be, look, Mom, no hands. But nowadays, when you're riding a computer, the big boast is, look, Mom, no wires. The world of portables is changing as wireless communications make mobile computing easier than ever. The cellular phone is the dominant wireless technology these days, so the obvious way to get wireless communications with a notebook computer is to hook it up to a cell phone. That's what Motorola is doing with their new Select PC-MCIA fax modem, designed for use with a cell phone. The tiny modem card offers data compression and error checking so the data can survive cellular handoffs and line distortion. IBM's approach is to start with the notebook and add the cell phone. This is IBM's new cellular communications module with a ThinkPad. You can use it for data or as a standard voice phone. You can even get wireless faxes with this ingenious device from reflection technology called the virtual display. Plug it into your cell phone and you can actually see a full fax by looking into this one inch LED display window. The unique magnification system gives you the same view as on a 12 inch CRT. Traveling software is using radio frequencies to offer wireless lap linking, moving files from your portable to your desktop. This is called AirShare. The unit attaches to your serial port, and it automatically connects to your desktop once you're within range. These AirShare transceivers, uh, at a price, a list price of $299 for two transceivers uh, and some incredible synchronization software, which will, which will allow essentially unconscious linking. The, uh, just walking into your office with an air-shared transceiver within a range of 10 meters or 30 feet in your office, through walls, through glass, walking into the building, causing a connection to be made, and the software will recognize that connection and automatically synchronize the two computers. So you don't have to do anything. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to plug a cable in. You don't have to plug a modem in. You don't have to plug in a network adapter. Wireless communication is even coming to networking. Zircom introduced this PC MCIA wireless network card, which lets you instantly connect your laptop to a LAN without using wires. The advent of the personal digital assistant is pushing wireless communications. Apple is demonstrating its new messaging card with a Newton PDA. What we did is we took a low-cost technology that people are very familiar with, messaging and paging, 
and we integrated it in a smart card that you can place inside your Newton. So anyone can send you, by, by calling a phone number, they can send you an alphanumeric message. Call the office, or I've scheduled lunch with you on Friday. Those kinds of messages can be sent directly to this messaging card. It's got its own battery, so it receives messages, whether it's inside the Newton or in your pocket. There was also a new spreadsheet card for the Newton, MobileCalc, from a company called MobileSum. It's designed specifically for a PDA. You can write numbers larger than the size of the cell. You can name rows and columns from a pull-down label menu, and it features enhanced handwriting recognition for numbers. Sharp was teasing us with the next generation of PDA displays. This is a prototype of an active matrix color LCD display for the PDAs of the future. It offers full VGA resolution in a palm top size. Sharp was also showing the PT9000 personal information assistant, a cross between a PDA and a notebook. You can use the keyboard or put ink on the screen. There are two PCMCIA slots and a port for adding on a floppy disk drive. Toshiba showed its first ever sub notebook featuring active matrix color, long life lithium ion battery technology, an integrated pointing device, and a 486 CPU. It's the first sub notebook with local bus video. And Panasonic showed the world's first multimedia notebook. You can add a CD ROM drive or a TV tuner. There were even 3D notebooks at this Comdex. This is the V Rex Cyberbook. It's available in Mac or PC configurations. The display is active matrix LCD with 1.4 million colors. One of the strangest new portables was this Dolphin DTR1, the world's smallest 486 computer. It's a combination PDA and notebook. It features the tiny HP Kitty Hawk hard drive. You can do pen input or voice input. And its designers say with the DTR, you don't have to decide between a PDA and a notebook. It can get all the information from any database in the world you want, either through wireline or wirelessly. However, it is also a full power personal computer. If there was one dominant technology here other than wireless that was driving portable technology, it was PCMCIA. More than 100 companies were showing new PCMCIA products at this Comdex. There was a PCMCIA wireless messaging card can turn your notebook into a pager. Epson was showing its new PC MCIA flash memory cards up to 20 megs on one card. And Epson also had this little thing called Cardio, a complete 386 PC motherboard on one PC MCIA card. New Media offered the Wave Jammer, a 16 bit stereo sound card using the PC MCIA format. Trimble Navigation has even managed to squeeze a global positioning system receiver into this PC MCIA card. All it takes is an add-on antenna, and your notebook is a GPS downlink. And for those of you who don't yet have PC MCIA slots, Cardport was offering this adapter, which turns your parallel port into two PC MCIA slots. There's also a model for a standard ISA expansion slot for your desktop. Coming up next, the Power PC versus the Pentium. Most new computer users may never get to see this, the inside of their computer, but it is here on the motherboard that the biggest battle in computer history may soon take place. Motorola, IBM, and Apple have come out with the Power PC chip as a direct competitor to Intel's Pentium processor. The Power PC may be the first serious challenge to Intel's dominance of the CPU market. The Power PC chip was everywhere here at Comdex. Apple was showing its new Macintosh with the Power PC in it. And the Apple folks think the Power PC will offer features other than just speed. But I think what also we're going to see is we're going to see people start to look at this and go, you know, now that I'm on a wrist chip, I can do things I didn't do before. So like a 3D package might start doing previews of shaded objects instead of wireframes because now they can do it. Or other applications might change the way the human interface works because they know they can update things immediately on a RISC processor. At the IBM booth, they were also touting the power PC, here shown running at 95 megahertz, enabling this computer to display several different moving images at once. IBM also thinks that the power PC will do more than make spreadsheets run faster. Those MIPS aren't going into recalculating the spreadsheet. They're really going into the human interface 
uh, to how that data is presented to the user. But 10 years from now, those human interfaces are going to change uh, much more dramatically. They'll be rendered graphical 3D uh, virtual reality type interface using sound, voice recognition, and all that takes an enormous amount of processing power. And one of the goals of the PowerPC microprocessor is to provide a lot of that graphical function uh, and DSP-like function along with calculating and executing the programs that are running. But over at Intel, they don't seem worried about the PowerPC. The, the PowerPC has no applications written for it now, or very few, and it doesn't have the applications written for it that are written for the uh, PC base. You know, there's about 100 million PCs out there, and people who have those PCs want to be able to run those applications, and it doesn't look as though those applications are going to be able to run in native mode on the PowerPC. Tim Baharin says it will be a slow start for the PowerPC, but that it's too soon to predict the outcome of this battle. There's no question that backward compatibility is very important so that the power PC will have a little bit of a problem. But what I think will be important is to watch what happens from the software community. While the software community continues to back Intel and the Pentium, we believe that Apple, IBM, and Motorola provide such a compelling reason because they have a better cost structure than even the Pentium that they're going to be able to get the Microsoft of the world and the WordPerfects and the others to write software in native mode. That means it's software written just for the power PC. And if you get software that's written for the power PC from the big guys, believe me, it will become a challenging product. But for now, Intel was the story, with more than 100 new Pentium models from 60 different vendors. IBM pushing Pentium and power PC at the same time was also offering an upgrade strategy for 486 users. This is the Blue Lightning microprocessor subsystem. IBM says it can triple your 486 clock speed up to 75 megahertz. The big battle was over computer throughput, but there were lots of little battles over computer input, with most vendors saying handwriting recognition and speech recognition have finally arrived. A year ago, two years ago, you would have saw, saw at Fall Comics a lot of voice recognition stuff. Candidly, it didn't work or it didn't work well enough that you'd use it every day in business. Yes, it was so-so. So the differences are, in the next 12 months now, the stuff you're seeing from Interactive and some of the new companies like Verbex, some of the newer Dragon System stuff, you're now seeing voice recognition that actually works. And I've yet to see an end user that as soon as he sees that he can legitimately talk to his computer, doesn't prefer at least doing that sometimes. The Interactive Communicator lets you talk to your computer. Computer. Next, Mr. Kevin. IBM claimed that its personal dictation system, 30 years in development, is finally ready for prime time. Any prime of text. It is speaker dependent, but it can handle continuous speech. The story was much the same on pen input, with vendors saying it really works now. Pen computing had drawn a lot of attention in the last couple of years, but hadn't quite hit the volume that a lot of the analysts were projecting. And a big part of that reason was because the pen computing products that they could get uh, were way too expensive and didn't necessarily work with the applications that they already invested in. So our product, we uh, expect to have a tremendous impact in developing the market by bringing pen computing in a package that will work with my existing PC, my existing applications, and that has a low enough price point to be very appealing to the masses. This is Handwriter for Windows hardware and software for under $200. The pen input technology works at the operating system level, so it can be used for any Windows application. If you still insist on a keyboard, how about this new Flex Pro from Keytronic? No, it's not broken. It's supposed to be that way. Ease the pressure on your wrists. And if you want to type but hate jumping from your mouse to your keyboard, you might like the new Mighty Mouse. It lets you type without ever taking your hand off the mouse and it has other advantages. One of the great things is our keyboard can turn from a regular keyboard or a Dvorak keyboard to an A, B, C, D, E. We're talking about kids getting on a computer and not having to search all over that because that's the keyboard that we have. We have seven sizes so that on your screen it could be as little as one by one inch or as big as half of the keyboard. So a half of the screen so that you can, that, you can really move around it pretty quickly. If you want to combine speech input and mouse input, you can do it all with the talking mouse from Thompson International. It can even help you learn Chinese.
But the best of show in the silly department was the motor mounts, shaped like a Corvette in your hand and on the screen. Everybody who stopped at the speed smiled. It's the nicest thing. They walk up, they hit the middle button, they beep the horn, they giggle, they smile, and they say, this is wonderful. Why didn't anybody think of this before? For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Stuart Chaffee at Comdex, Fall 93.